Now at 10 o'clock, a fire at a building on William Carey's campus is out. Leaders share an update on what was affected next. Plus, planning to hit the water this summer. We're catching up with Hattiesburg Fire Department crews about tips to keep you safe while boating. And the weather is looking hot over the next several days. We've got the latest numbers for you coming up. But your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Well, tonight all is clear after a fire on the campus of William Carey earlier this evening. Take a look. Crews were called out to McMillan Hall this afternoon for calls of heavy smoke. We showed you images from our Skycam live during our 6 o'clock and 6.30 newscasts as Hattiesburg firefighters got to work. The building houses the IT department, a bookstore and gift shop. First responders were able to contain the fire. And William Carey leaders are just thankful for the quick response. Some damage to the bookstore in the uh, rear of the building and of course now some water damage from uh, extinguishing the fire and smoke damage. We're very thankful that uh, uh, nobody was injured and it was really not what we consider a major fire uh, contained on one side of this building uh, away from our technology side which is good. They really were on, on the spot within minutes uh, and contained the fire. There's no word yet on how long it may take to clean up the damage at the bookstore part of that building. Hattiesburg Fire and Rescue crews were called out to the Leaf River after a boat turned over, leaving two people in the water earlier this month. And tonight, they are talking with WDAM 7's Delaney Dukes about tips to keep you and your family safe on the water this summer. Hattiesburg firefighters do more than fight fire. Earlier this month, emergency crews responded to the call of a capsized boat in the Leaf River, where two people had to be rescued. We launched the boat and uh, went out and got them. They didn't have no life jackets on. If they'd been wearing life jackets, they probably wouldn't even have needed, needed us that night. Many HFD firefighters are trained in swift water rescue. With their training, firefighters were able to get the individuals out of the water and back to land unharmed, which is why emergency responders are now sharing a warning for people boating on the water as the summer goes on. Anytime you're out on the water, river, it doesn't matter, boating, make sure you're wearing a life jacket, tell somebody where you're going, have a plan in place. Uh, a good time will be like whenever you get done riding, let them know you'll be done at six, seven, anytime like that. Hattiesburg Fire Rescue has access to a boat in the case of an emergency, but they don't just stay in the city limits. We have the Leaf River, we have the Bowie River, and we have several lakes around this area. And we also get deployed outside the city, you know, if, if other counties or other locations need swift water rescue, we've been deployed outside the city with our boats to go <coughs> assist with them. In Hattiesburg, Delaney Dukes, WDAM 7, on your side. And officials say they plan to continue training firefighters in swift water rescue to make sure they're prepared this summer. All right, now back over to Patrick. Plenty of people may be wanting to get out on the water in the next couple of days because it's going to be hot out there. Yeah, it truly is. We're going to see temperatures skyrocket up into the mid 90s and eventually the upper 90s as we head into the weekend. Thankfully, things are pretty quiet out there at the moment. This right here is a live look at Forest General Hospital. We're currently sitting at 81 degrees at the moment. No big problems out there uh, as we overlook Midtown Hattiesburg tonight. Temperatures are cooling down. We're already down to 79 in Purvis, 80 still in Petal. It's 77 in Moselle, 78 in Soso, 76 in Columbia, and still 82 out towards New Augusta. Temperatures continue to cool down, and when you wake up tomorrow morning, we're going to start off your day with temperatures down basically into the low, low to mid 70s, right around 74 to 75. But as you can see, we're going to see those temperatures jump fast up into the mid 90s by the afternoon. We'll take a full look at the forecast in just a few minutes. Thanks, Patrick. The debate continues about what you can legally have when it comes to modifications on your gun. Courtney Ann Jackson's on your side tonight looking at whether the latest Supreme Court ruling is in conflict with any state laws, including one set to take effect July 1st.
A federal ban on bump stocks took effect in 2018. It was in response to the mass shooting at a Las Vegas music festival the previous year. The ATF regulation classified guns with bump stocks as machine guns. That ban was struck down by the United States Supreme Court last week. Because there aren't any Second Amendment issues, because uh, in this instance, given the federal failure to regulate, there aren't any preemption issues, uh, the states can go ahead and do what they want. Mississippi lawmakers just passed legislation criminalizing the manufacturing possession and use of machine gun conversion devices. The question then is whether that impacts bump stocks. Senator Joey Fillingain was on the conference committee that worked out the details of the bill's language that they say was specifically targeting Glock switches. And basically the, the distinction is when you pull the trigger one time, if more than one shot is fired with just the single pull, then that is what we outlaw. That's uh, considered a machine gun. That language was worked out with the help of the National Rifle Association. They worked very closely with us in drafting the language, and they would have been very concerned had we been expansive enough to have prohibited bump stocks. The group Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America was pleased to see Glock switches banned, but... And that they should have made it more expansive because, as you know, we have a lot of gun violence here in Jackson and all over the state. We are trying to do everything that we can that would uh, prevent gun violence. So any, any legislation that we can come up with here in uh, Mississippi that will help reach an objective, that's what we want to see. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM on your side. Congress is looking at the bump stock issue after the Supreme Court decision, but the legislation to ban the devices was blocked in the U.S. Senate Wednesday. Civil Air Patrol cadets from a dozen states are participating in an annual summer encampment here in Hattiesburg. More than 130 cadets between 12 and 18 years old are developing leadership skills, checking out careers in aerospace sciences and also doing some flying in civilian and military aircraft. The Civil Air Patrol is the official civilian auxiliary for the U.S. Air Force. Throughout everything that we do here, we get to advance ourselves, but also train others. And that's the mission is once we become leaders is the success of our followers and we get to become leaders, training leaders to lead. I've made so many friends in the few years that I've been here and uh, they keep bringing me back. I met people that I'm going to stick with my entire life, people who've changed my life quite literally. So uh, I don't think I would give that up for anything, really. The encampment wraps up Sunday. The new Mandy Buchanan Art Park is under construction in front of the Glory House in Laurel. The $25,000 project plans have been in the works for more than a year now. The art park is designed to honor the late Mandy Buchanan and showcase her love for art. Children will be able to learn about art and culture from the seven foot long mural that will be painted by local and state artists. She would certainly be uh, excited about young people coming and painting some of these murals and seeing all of this that, that, that this will become when it's finished. And it was a, a, a neat little opportunity for us to try to kind of capture some of her energy and, and what she did for a living in her art and then kind of create something here that we can share w with people and kind of keep her legacy moving. The mural is expected to be done by the end of August or beginning of September. If you'd like to make a donation, you can head over to our website for information on how to do that. Still ahead at 10 o'clock after last year's drought, local farmers are feeling more optimistic this year. We're going to have some more details after the break.